All right, uh, so I'll just do a small description about myself. Can you, can everyone hear me? Yes? Okay, so I'll do a small description about myself. So I would like to first describe myself as a teacher. Uh, ever since I've been small, uh, I had this curiosity to learn. No, I wasn't, the, I wasn't really the smartest kid, but I think I was the most curious one among the lot. So, and... As soon as I started uh, learning, like the next thing that I would do is I would go to my mom or my grandfather. I would say, look, look, I learned something new. All right, I want to teach you that. So that has been something that has been guiding me throughout my life, uh, that yearning for knowledge and the desire to teach, especially to young ones, okay? And uh, next, of course, by profession, I'm an attorney at law. And uh, so I do not practice law anymore, but I am definitely engaged in the academic field in that area. I'm pursuing my PhD in uh, public international law as well. So uh, in addition to that, I have an entrepreneurial background to me as well that is inherited by my father, uh, Mr. G.L. Tilakaratna, who's not here today. His innovation has come, comes from. So, excuse me, excuse me, hello. Yeah, so, uh, and in addition to that, so I would like to consider myself as a very dutiful son, as well as uh, a very dutiful and loving husband as well. So uh, that's a very small description about me. So enough about me. Uh, uh, we'll consider like moving forward. And first of all, I would like to uh, launch the book by presenting it, presenting it to uh, my uh, mentor, whoever I, I identified as my mentor. And after that, briefly, I'll launch this new academic movement. It's an interdisciplinary academic, academic movement for the study of peace. And I'll explain why it is called TN Diplomacy and what's the background of it, what's the purpose, what are the main objectives, and so forth. And after that, uh, I'll do a small presentation, which would take about 45 minutes, about the nature, uh, otherwise the science of peace and violence. All right? And finally, the most important event, the panel discussion, uh, like we have the eminent people uh, relating to education in Sri Lanka right here today and we'll have a discussion with them. All right, so that's the plan. Uh, so we'll continue uh, with the launch of the book. So we can welcome the Honorable Minister as well. Uh, Mr. Sarath Virasekara, Dr. Sarath Virasekara, who is the uh, Minister of Public Security of Sri Lanka. Okay, all right. So, uh, so I'll put the mic down. Can you hear me? All right, that's brilliant. So it's a very informal event. Okay, I was actually planning to have this at Lakshman Katragama Center. I booked the place and everything, but then they told me the Pakistani Prime Minister is coming there, so I had to reschedule everything. I said I can't cancel the event because I have invited very valuable people and I can't pay with their time. All right, so I'll just very briefly launch the book by just giving the book to a few of my mentors. All right, the book's name is called A Glimpse of Public International Law. This is mainly due to I, the reason that I published this or wrote this is because there's a lot of misinformation about public international law, especially even like circulated by the mainstream media. All right. So I just wanted to dispel myths. And I'm also for my LLM, LLM also, uh, I wanted to include uh, law as a syllabus for local students because no one knows the law. All right in this country and the law itself says that ignorance of the law is not an excuse but the education system is not teaching anyone law and that's a big failure on our part and we expect students to be lawful at the end of the day all right so that's a big failure on my part so we are trying to get it into the a-level system as well okay so first of all i would like to present it to uh, madam basanta 
who is my mentor and uh, intellectual mentor. And thank you very much, madam. Okay. Next to Mrs. Dr. Sunil, who is the director of uh, National Institute of Education, Director General. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, then to the Honorable Minister, okay. thank you very much for coming. Okay. And then to Dr. Harshalas, who has been with me like through my difficult times and supported me. Uh, he's my boss, immediate boss, the chairman of the Gateway Group. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I'll bear with me, I'll move to the next slide. Pass it down. All right, so it's a glimpse of public international law. All right, so basically this book is about uh, like public international law. So what is public international law? All right, there are two types of international law, private and public. All right, public international law relates to like the regulation of states in the international context. All right, in the international field, how are states to re like regulate their behavior? According to what rules should states act with one another? All right, it regulates their relationships. Okay, so what is uh, important to understand here is that unlike local law, all right, public international law is mainly based out of consent of states. Why is this? Because states are considered sovereign equals, at least legally, all right? That is not seen in the practical world, but at least legally they are seen as sovereign equals. So therefore, you cannot bind another state without their consent, all right? And it must be a genuine and informed consent as well, all right? So therefore, this book basically covers several chapters relating to the most basic and fundamental concepts of public international law. All right. So I have to first go through the dedication. All right. It is my duty. If I don't do that, I fail as a human being. So first of all, I dedicate this book to my father and my mother, GL Tilakaratna and Disna Tilakaratna, and Umali Tilakaratna as well, who's my sister, and my grandparents, my family, okay, and, and my friends especially who has been through thick and thin with me. All right. And furthermore, I cannot forget to mention late Prof Emeritus Professor Carlo Fonseca, who has been like a grandfather, who's been like a personal mentor to me, and uh, who would have been delighted if he was alive today. And of course, I have to thank Professor Vasanta as well uh, for being there and supporting me and encouraging me throughout, and also Dr. Harshalas, who is as well as the general public, okay? And basically, the aim of the reader should be to systematically understand who makes international law, who is governed by international law, what are the sources of international law, how international law is made, how international law is applied, and what happens when international law is breached, and how to seek justice under international law as well. And finally, very importantly, what, is, what are the conditions for the use of force, okay, in international force. When I say use of force, use of military force. Okay, then moving on, this is something I, I would say most of the book is not original in the sense that I have not contributed any original knowledge. I have just basically summarized the case law and the international conditions out there in a very concise and uh, digestible manner. But if there's an original contribution, I would say it's called Pigment Predicament. This is a chapter that I wrote because ever since I was a kid, there was this innate feeling in me that desired peace among people. I don't know why, I never liked people fighting. I voted to see different races and humanity get together and live. For that particular purpose, I've written this theory of sorts, something which I call toolism. All right, it's a new word, it's called toolism. That is basically where people are divided on the basis of the tools they use or otherwise they become like people when they use tools. When I say tools, tools such as language, belief systems, codes of conduct, okay? All these things, when they start using it, with time, they then, be, they 
they become in essence the tool like they identify themselves with the tools themselves all right so we look at this thing this is a small mental experiment i would like you to think about it like close your eyes if you like to just imagine this thing imagine that you are manifested in a world without any memory of who you are all right and there is no one else but you however you have skills necessary to survive and solutions could you close the door and just stop the interruptions okay however you have the skills necessary to survive and find solutions uh, solutions you aim yourself what challenges your survival in this world for one thing uh, you are alone and the inability to work with someone else is a challenge i identify challenge similarly there would be risk based challenges survive all right so there are also challenges arising arising from various threats to your life uh, like for example which are called exis existential challenges such as natural disasters uh diseases predators such as covid-19 that we face today as all of humanity and uh, there might also be spiritual challenges such as questions such as uh, about death the meaning of life and so forth collectively remember this, this is very important we can call these things original challenges okay uh so now imagine however if another person appears okay also struggling with the same original challenges okay it is unlikely that you will see immediately see this person as a challenge all right for the moment this person fixes your challenge of being alone the original relationship challenge all right this person calls herself he all right uh, soon another person calling himself man appears over time all of you meet now random chance or luck all of you get a opportunity to meet one another so using your ability to reason you realize that your chances of survival are greater together than being alone all right because you are naturally rational then he man uh, the same way thinks the same way and the three of you being human all of you decide to create tools this is a fundamental difference we create tools all right so you decide to create tools such as a language a code of conduct such as laws that we have a belief system etc these tools get refined daily and new versions are implemented to face more complex relationship challenges all right connected with uh, the addition of new members to this human population since the name of your human is too long to write the members of this group call themselves human the human family keeps inventing new tools and, and to aid their survival being exploring more areas of the world after some ha time however these guys separate all right they break into small tribes and they ex they start exploring the world and they separate from one another okay and they start facing new natural surroundings so these new natural surroundings of each group affect the degree and nature of their original challenges so the degree and the nature of the original challenges change all right because of this change these people now have to adjust their tools all right for example if they have been using a different language they might have to use another one for example if you lived in a area where there's enough fruit and you can be vegetarian and some people move into a place where it's a desert and like less well little resources available but meat okay so you might have to change your code of conduct and your belief system as well right because of the natural surroundings has changed you have to change your tools to adapt all right what this happen uh, next happen is as a result of this each group forgets the original purposes no wait these uh, these new natural surroundings of each group affect the degree and so as i told you and the group gradually loses touch with one another and unique identities this is something very important that's why we identify ourselves into separate ethnicities and unique identities solidify around these tools they use 
tools such as language, codes of conduct, belief systems become part of their identities and ending indist indistinguishable from who they are. All right, such as us, we call ourselves Sinhalese, Tamils, okay, Muslims. We do that because we, after start using these tools, we become the tools themselves. All right. As a result of this, each group forgets the original purpose of tools and gives tools immutable status. Now they are given an immutable status. They have forgotten why did we come up with these tools in the first place? That is to aid our survival, not the other way around. Okay. Thus, this phenomena, born out of the original challenges, has brought about a new class of challenges, tool-based challenges. In essence, people have become what they use. All right. Now, all members of each group have the following challenges in various degrees. Relationship-based challenges, resource-based challenges, existential challenges, and tool-based challenges. As individuals, including yourself, feel a great deal of veneration for their tools, such as your language. Okay? As they have helped them to survive. However, as a first human, you remember a time when tools were just a tool. Alright? And excuse me for that disturbance, I have to say that again because of that. However, as a first human, you remember a time when tools were just tools. They served you and not the other way around. You also experience the dangers of this challenge, especially when the differences between tools of each group transform into existential challenges, conflict, violence, war, and even genocide. All right? Therefore, he, you, and man get together and agree to prioritize facing the original challenges together than challenging one another. This story of, human, of the human family that started with you is still being written and how the rest is written, written is mainly up to you. Right? This I would say is one of my original contributions to I think the field of philosophy or whatever you call it. And uh, so the rest of it is basically technical points about international law. All right? So that is the gist of the law, the morale of the law, of the book. Okay, thank you very much for that. All right. So we could actually start serving like our ladies and gentlemen the tea. Yeah.